All right, everybody, we got ourselves a 2009 Silverado 2500 HD. Taking a look at this, uh, customer complaint is a no crank situation. First of all, we're gonna verify that concern. It does not crank, but take a look here. I want you to see that we do have a Prindle. It does say it's in park. And we do have a check engine light, but also we have a security light. So we gotta do a complete vehicle DTC scan, get a baseline what's going on here. Now plugging in the top down scan tool, uh, the VCI or communication device, the interface device is not powering up. So we gotta be worried about our pins four and five being ground. And also uh, our power to our DLC, which I think comes from under the hood. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna take a look here in the side panel real quick. Um, I think there is a fuse panel here, but I don't know if one of these is for the DLC. It might be the courtesy fuse or the uh, possibly the, um, maybe the lighter fuse. We're gonna have to figure that out. Taking a look under the hood here, this fuse block is extremely corroded. I don't know if you can see the greenness here. It is in rough shape, guys. This is a very rough situation. Um, we've gotta go ahead and, uh, I think the lighter fuse is the one that powers up the DLC, and that's fuse 53. So 53 is, uh, where's 53 at? Right down there. All right, so let's see what's up. And if 53 is a 20 amper, it's gonna be this guy right here. Probably gonna break off as I try and pull it out. All right, I did get that fuse out of there. It's pretty rough, as you see here. That thing just flat out broke. All right, we got ourselves a new fuse to put in here. And we'll see what happens. That is very, very corroded, but let me see if I can get it in there and let's see if we get our vehicle communication interface back. There it goes on, it's turning on now. So uh, we may be dealing with a lot of corrosion problems on this. I really gonna recommend getting a fuse block. But now that we've got that done, uh, we can start our auto scan here and see if we can't pull the VIN number out of this thing. And I do have to fire up my internet because in case I got to get my computer going we'll have to have that going as well so it looks like I hear something going on we did uh, ID the vehicle that's awesome and uh, I'm gonna go to local diagnosis I hear a little VCI uh, beeping and this uh, does this have a six speed or four speed drive manual and one I gotta be the first one to tell you I don't know. Um, I think if this has a four speed, it might have a external transmission control module down here. If this was a four speed, I'm almost 100% sure we'd have a transmission control module down here, uh, but we don't. So I'm gonna go with six speed. Go with a six speed here. And does this have a manual transfer case? Yes, it does, as you see. We've got the shift knob down there, so that's what that's all about. And uh, this is manual air conditioning. All the questions they ask us to fix a car, right? And they're asking for our GBW. We are 9,200 pounds, so we are over equal to well, over 8,600. So, and then does this have Z95? I gotta go over there and check that. And the RPO sticker is right down here, and we do not have Z95. We have uh, Z something else that's not focusing good, but uh, we have Z88 and Z85. And does this have JL4? I should have stayed over there. And we do not have JL4. This does not have JH7, it has JH6. And there we go, we're gonna do our smart scan on the system or on the vehicle, should I say. And as we're doing our smart system scan, I'm gonna take a look around. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do is crank my head up underneath the dash, see if I see anything uh, obvious. I'm just looking around for any tampering. Um, there's a scotch lock here in this circuit. I don't know what this is here. That's kind of odd. Um, I don't wanna mess around too much because I might damage the very systems I'm trying to diagnose. So let's take a look underneath the hood. I hear it has a starter on there already. Uh, we already know this fuse, blocks, uh, fuse box or fuse block needs to be replaced. Very common problem we see on these cars all the time. I'm just perusing 
If you guys see something I'm missing, let me know. I'm looking at the grounds on the block. Uh, very, very corroded down there. Let me... So as this thing's doing its code scan, we're doing our walk around here, visual inspection, and I see some very, very crusty grounds. I'm gonna try to reach down here and scrap them, see if they fall apart. I mean, if they fall off when you give them a little tug, it's bad. Can't have that, but I don't see much going on. If you guys see something I don't, be sure to let me know. All right, so we're getting our pre-report generated here. This is our pre-scan. You've got two BCM codes, two IPC codes. Uh, ECM says no codes there. That's interesting. Uh, we do have that TCM, like I said, a six-speed. So it's interesting that engine control module doesn't have any codes setting. Let's go ahead and uh, hit a report button. And... Okay, and I want to read this whole report. It says it's generating report. I didn't see where it saved it. And we're going to save. And this is pre-repair. And now let's open it. So, okay, we got a body control device ignition one short circuit opener ground. That's a big problem. And device ignition circuit uh, accessory shorted ground. Uh, lots, of, lots of stuff going on there. So let's go ahead right into our body control module data. BCM data is where I'm going. Let's get that up and hit enter. And we're going to read data stream. I want to take a look at what the codes are that are setting, or should I say, I want to see the um, voltage. Let's go to power mode. We'll take a look at that. And uh, this is actually just a bunch of stuff. Select all. OK. So accessory relay command is on, current run mode, power mode is run. Let me go to start and we'll see. It should say start, crank request, that's good. So you got to hold it there for a second for that to come on. We got to off reference, I'm looking around. Pardon me if I talk as I'm going with you guys. Let's go into maybe our inputs. What I'm looking for is a uh, some information on our vehicle. I'm looking for like uh, voltages for the uh, module itself. We can take a look at theft data. Oops, theft data. Let's select all. Hit OK. CDT status is disarmed. None, none, none. Put a jar says closed. Well, really, it's active, it's open. And we say that our theft LED is off in a body control module. That's really interesting. So let's go double check here. TDM. What's a TDM? Theft deterrent module. Not communicating. It's not there. It's not on a network. Guys, that's going to be a problem. I want to take a look at where this uh, theft deterrent module gets its powers and grounds from. Uh, just so you guys know, this is a uh, plus style key. That's a GM key with a plus sign on it. So uh, I do believe this theft module is its own own module all by itself. And I don't know that for a fact. I'm surprised, like I said, the ECM doesn't say anything about this. It says no DTCs. We should be able to go into a read data stream here. And there's probably going to be a theft data or maybe electrical theft data. There we go. If we go to electrical theft there, I'm going to select all and hit OK. Take a look what we got. I just want to scroll through here and see. Let's see, an engine control module and theft VDT fail enable. No. Um, some of these data pits can be very funny and not make any sense. So let's see, vehicle theft apparent fuel enabled is yes. So that's interesting that security light's on. I would expect to have some other stuff going on. We can also go back to, oh, well, where we go? Just like the other vehicle we recently worked on. Starter relay uh, command, and then there should be the, um, let's see, the starter relay request. Where did I see that? Crank request, we're gonna make sure that that says yes. It says yes, let's see what the starter relay command says. Starter relay command is off. So I'm in a crank position. This thing's not talking to the um, 
that's the thermal module. We'll take a look. Taking a look at an all data diagram here. Uh, here's our vehicle theft deterrent module. Uh, there is a uh, accessory voltage that comes from the body control module, and there's also a battery voltage uh, or ignition voltage. I'm not sure. It looks like it's a red wire, so I'm expecting battery voltage. Should be coming to that module. Um, let's get this going. Should be coming to that module from this circuit right here. Let's get that highlighted if I can. I'm trying to hold the camera for you all, and it's not easy. There you go. Get that going. So that goes all the way up here. And that goes to a two amp fuse underneath the uh, underhood fuse block. So left side of engine compartment, this DLS fuse 36 or fuse 32. I don't know why, but it's only a two amp fuse. So let's go take a look out there. 32 or 35, well, let's see. 32, there's a IHDLP. 35 is a DLS. 35 right there. So where is 35 at in this picture? 34, 35. There's gonna be a couple, couple relays and stuff. And this guy should be right up in here. Bam! There it is. And this is a two amp fuse here. I'm trying to get in there and pull it out. Two amps isn't a lot of amperage, that's for sure. Um, Let's see if that fuse is any good. I could have tested for voltage at it first, but I'm really thinking it's going to be corroded, and who knows what's going to want to go on here. Oh, there it goes. Look at that right there. You can see you should be able to see the one break in that leg. Let me see if I can maintain this up like that. There it is, broken. I had to do some hunting, but I did find in my fuse uh, assortment a 2 amp fuse, so we're going to go ahead and install this, and... Hopefully it doesn't blow because I don't think I have another one, but we're going to find out right quick. Got that plugged in there. It doesn't feel too good. It feels a little loose if you ask me. Well, let's go back to our scan tool and uh, see what's up. Well, I can tell you things are looking, looking up already. We got our security lights out. Let's go back to our top down scanner and go back. Let's go take a look here. Uh, I want to go into my theft deterrent module. And hit enter before it was not there. Let's go read fault codes, DTC display. This may have some other issues going on with these other codes. Um, no transponder modulation, that's interesting. Well, let's go ahead and give it a rip, huh? Let's see what we get. All right, rock and roll. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these other codes and see what else we got going on. Uh, I really feel we should got to do a complete vehicle DTC scan. Um, let me hit the back button. We'll do a whole smart scan one more time and see what pops. All right, so we got this thing running. We're looking good. We got a vehicle that starts up, runs, and as you see here, the security light is out. I'm going to see if that airbag light stays on or off, um, but we did do a complete vehicle DTC scan. We still have the airbag uh, light is on. Now, what's really interesting is it, I don't have an SRS uh, communication right now. I think what we're going to be doing is telling these people to get a fuse block in this thing and we'll go from there. But as you see, all those body control module, ignition one voltage codes, all that stuff went away and we're looking good. So guys, having a diagnostic strategy and a plan to follow helps as always. Take care. Have a good day.